Hello everybody, today sees the release of this, Paul McCartney, 1964, Eyes of the Storm. Brand new book uh, that's just arrived in the post today. I was surprised at how big this book is. I'm going to show you it against some other things for comparison soon, but I want to tell you a little bit about this book, uh, show you some of the things that are in it, and I'm going to drop some links down in the comments in the description. Um, for where you can buy this book. Uh, I want to know your comments about this. Uh, have you got this book? Are you planning on getting it? Tell me what you think. But anyway, here's the story of this book. So it was announced, I think it was back in January when it was announced, and here's a, a, a brief description. I've got some text here of uh, how it was described. In 2020, an extraordinary trove of nearly a thousand photographs taken by Paul McCartney on a 35 millimeter camera was rediscovered in his archive. They intimately recalled the months towards the end of 1963 and the beginning of 1964 when Beatlemania erupted in the UK and after the band's first visit to the USA, they became the most famous people on the planet. These photos are Paul's personal record, as it says here, uh, that when they were putting together a, an exhibition of Linda's photographs back in 2020, it reminded Paul that, hang on a second, I remember that I took a load of photographs back in Beatle days uh, and they were uncovered and the result is this. And it's going to be an exhibition as well at the National Portrait Gallery in London, starting in the back end of June. I'm hoping to get to see that in early July uh, if I get chance. So anyway, back to this book. So uh, I'm going to show you uh, all sides of it. So you will see here this. This is actually a, a removable strip here you'll see it goes over to the other side there and it does it will slide off I'm going to keep mine on there for a while but um, photographs and reflections by Paul McCartney we've got an introduction by Jill Laporte so Jill Laporte is a professor of American history at Harvard University uh, she, she's also a writer for the New Yorker so we've got an, uh, an introduction by her but there's also a forward by Paul in here as well so there's your side spine there, that would look nice on the shelf. And on the back there, hopefully you can get a good view of that. Pause that if you wish to, to uh, view at your leisure. Okay. Uh, so it does say there, 60 pounds. Now, I don't think many places are selling it for that much. For example, on Amazon at the moment, this is, I think it's about 45 pounds. Um, I'm sure there's probably places selling it for less as well. I've heard a lot of comments uh, before this book came out of people saying, oh, I'm not paying that much for a book. And that's quite understandable. When this arrived and I saw how big and, and sort of sturdy it is, very much a coffee table kind of book, um, I immediately could see where the money's gone. This, this is, a, I think at £45, this is pretty damn good value, to be honest, looking at this. So anyway, let's, uh, let's just open this up and give you a, a brief... Uh, idea of what's in here like I said, I'm not going to go through everything because it's how many pages is it uh, well we're all already up to 300 there it's about 330 pages so I'm not going to be showing you all of this 1964 eyes of the storm uh, photos and reflections by Paul McCartney uh, what I will do uh, is I'll show you the um, the index page so you can get an idea of what's in here dedicated to my wife my children their children and my glorious family and friends Okay, so here's the index page there so that you can get an idea of the kind of contents that you are going to see in this book. So, like I say, it covers the back end of 1963 through to, I think, about the summer of 64. So it's photographs from six cities, Liverpool, London, Paris, New York, Washington, D.C. and Miami. And it was really just whatever Paul was wanting to take uh, photographs of the time. So there's a lot of photographs of the Beatles, the, the things that were going on around the Beatles, whether that be fans or police or whatever. I'll show you some examples here. We've got a, a nice forward by Paul McCartney here, which goes on for another two full pages there. And does it go on again? Yeah, another page there of forwards. So there's plenty of... Another two pages, there's plenty of forward by Paul McCartney in this. Uh, and then it goes on to a, a preface by Nicholas Cullinan. So anyway, let's let's get to some photographs. What I did notice immediately going through here is um, it's very interesting as well. You see the seasons in here, you've got you've got the very cold 
Washington and New York of February 1964. You've then got the glorious summer of uh, Miami in August 64. So it's uh, you, you get to see the seasons in here as well. So it starts off with, uh, let's just show you some, we're going back to December 63 here. So these just would just be photographs that Paul was taking. Uh, he'd got himself a new camera and he was just taking lots and lots of photographs. And so here we see this is before they went to America. This is the back end of 63. There's no big long essays as such with any of these photographs, but quite often most of the pages do have maybe a sentence or, or so at the bottom, just giving a very brief sort of recollection of what was going on here. A uh, lovely photograph of Brian Epstein there. So we start off in Britain uh, and then we move forward that was a Liverpool section. We then go to a London section. I did notice as well going through, through this that there are quite a few photos of Jane Asher as well, which is, yeah, it's nice to see that Paul's sort of happy to talk about uh, Jane, even if Jane's not happy to talk about Paul. Uh, so, But she's certainly uh, shown in these photographs. This would have been very early on in their relationship. So we've got a London section and then eventually it's going to move on. I'll just show you this because that's a lovely photo of John there in the back of a car. I mean, you will not have seen these photographs before. None of us will have seen these photographs before. Certainly the vast majority of them anyway. Uh, it looks like we've then gone on to, I think we're in America here now, by now. Uh, so like I say, it's not just photographs of the Beatles, but it's photographs that Paul was taking of all the madness around them. Um, and then when you get later on in the book, once you get to the summer, of 64 uh, the Miami section we start to get glorious color uh, well not, not straight away but eventually soon there you go we're starting to get some color photographs now let's let's get some here we go so this is them ha just sort of hanging about enjoying life in America in the summer of 64 so, you know, you've got 300 and odd pages of this. Like I said, I'm not gonna show you all of it. It's, I, w I was really surprised at how big this book was, like I said, when it landed. It's pretty heavy as well. I had a look through sort of various box sets and box sets that Paul McCartney fans watching this might have for comparison, if you wanna know how big it's gonna be on your shelf. And what I pulled out was the nearest thing I could find in size is the Tug of War Archive Edition. Uh, so if you've got that, you'll see it's about the same width. It's, oh, it's almost the same height. The, the new book is just slightly shorter than that. And it's a very similar width. So that's the kind of, um, kind of size that we're looking at here for this book. So Paul McCartney is obviously doing a lot of publicity for this at the moment. Uh, he was on BBC's The One Show last night. I managed to get a recording of that that I've uh, put up that's available for you to watch on my channel, should you so wish. Uh, but yeah, really interesting book this. Um, I like the fact that Paul is going back and doing these kind of things now. We're never going to get a Paul McCartney autobiography. I think we can all be pretty certain of that. It's not going to happen. But in the last few years, we've seen Paul go back and, and doing sort of projects like this, the McCartney 321 documentary with Rick Rubin um, and the lyrics book that he came out with. He's doing those kind of projects that are going to tell... Um, in the way that he wants to the story of his life, because, yeah, I don't think we're ever going to get an autobiography from Paul. Uh, it's taken Mark Lewison long enough to, to write that one for the 60s without, uh, without Paul having to go and do it as well. Uh, this reminded me as well of uh, when I was at the Liverpool Beatles Museum in, I think it was back in 2019. They might have actually updated this now. Uh, um, if, if you've been recently, let me know if you know. But there's a roll of film there. Uh, that always intrigued me where it said that this is a roll of film taken by Neil Aspinall of John Lennon in the mid 60s. We don't know what's on it. One day we'll get it developed and we'll show it. And this kind of reminded me of this. This is again, you know, hidden photographs. We didn't know what on earth was available. And now we're getting to see things that we've not, not seen before. So really interested by this book. I think this is something that I'm going to take my time with, flick through, keep coming back to. It's not a, it's not a story as such that you need to uh, invest in and, and read chapters at a time. I think you can dip in and out of this book. But I think it will be very interesting. It's, uh, it's available, I believe, in paperback and on Kindle as well. I, I don't think I'd want to... 
I don't think I'd want to download something like this on Kindle. I think I'd want the actual sort of proper printed photographs or something like this. But uh, but that's available should you so wish. It's by Penguin Books uh, and yeah, really looking forward to getting to grips with this. I am going to be back very soon with another video, like I say, about this um, very intriguing news that's, that Paul McCartney's announced today that they've been working on, or he has been working on, we don't know whether Ringo has, um, another final sort of Beatles song to follow on from Free as a Bird and Real Love. I've got lots of thoughts on that. It ties in very much with certain rumours that have been flying around for a few months. It ties in very nicely with those. So I've got quite a few things I want to cover on a video on that. So I hope you'll join me for that sometime. Uh, but yeah, let me know down in the comments if you're getting this book and what you think of it. And I will see you again very soon. See you later. Bye.